Hey, welcome to Think Creative TV. I'm Matt Pullen, and this is our place to share all about how to use your iPad creatively in your classrooms. If you enjoy these videos, please don't forget to subscribe, and then you'll be kept up to date on everything that we release. Now let's get stuck into today's video. Hey, so this video is going to take a look at how to get started with Keynote. Now Keynote is Apple's uh, presentation tool. Some people liken it to PowerPoint, to Google Slides. I would say that yes, it can do uh, you know, presentations perfectly well, but there are lots of other things that you can do with it. And please do check out some of the other Keynote videos to find out some of the other um, awesome tools that have within Keynote to allow it to be so much more than a presentation tool. But we're just gonna have a look at how we get started. So open up the Keynote app. Um, yours is gonna look something similar to this. If you've seen any of my videos before about getting started, um, I always tell people to be organized with their folders. You can see from mine, I'm really not that organized, but definitely um, if you are starting out with Keynote, if you drag down on the screen, you'll see that you open up this panel above and you can start a new folder <coughs> and title it with, with whatever you're doing. So let's just say I'm just going to add in a new folder called training. Oops, already got one of those, uh, training two. And I'm going to go into that folder and I'm going to start creating things in here. So this gives me this kind of place where everything's going to be stored straight away. It just makes it a whole lot easier in your organization and going forward as you make lots of new keynote presentations and projects and all sorts of different things to keep them all organized in that way. Okay, so once we're in this, uh, similar to Pages, if you've seen my Get Started with Pages video, we can start a new project here or by tapping here. So I'm just going to tap ahead, go into it. And again, similar to Pages, we have lots of pre-made templates that we can use. So depending on what you want to work on, there are things in here that can just help you get started with something that you're doing. Really nice, you know, the color gradient ones, really nice uh, pictorial ones. Now, this doesn't mean that you have to use these pictures. You can do, obviously, but they're just a style. You get the, t the font, the color, the, the style outline, etc. Um, so some really, really nice styles just to just get you started. Um, so let's go into the bold color one. So you'll see from this point, um, again, very, very similar setup. I mentioned this in my Pages tutorial. I know I'm in Keynote because of the blue color at the top. Pages would be orange, numbers is green. And we have the basic setup. So if I wanna go back out of my presentation, I tap on presentations. If I want to take a look here at different views of my presentation, this can be really, really nice actually. I'll probably do a separate video on how you can use the light table view for doing different things but you can have light table, which means you'll see all of your slides as you build, or slide view, where you see your one you're working on, and thumbnails down the side. You can also show your presenter notes, so you'll have the screen down the bottom, and your navigator, so that you can you know, work your way through things. It basically means that this panel here can disappear, um, and, and actually, sometimes people get lost if that happens. So if you turn it on, it just means that this panel will always stay, regardless of if I go nice and big, I'll just show you if I turn that off. If I go nice and big now, you'll see that that thumbnail has disappeared from down the side. So useful thing there because I have I've you know been asked by people for you know I've lost my thumbnails. I can't move between any of the slides. If that happens to you, you might want to just turn on Always Show Navigator and just help you in that way. Okay, so let's take a look at the options over here. Again, very similar to Pages in the fact that we have the tool that allows us to edit. So if I tap on the text tap on the paintbrush, I can change all of those styles, exactly the same way as you can do this across all the iWork platforms, and that's the real selling point to me, is that once I know how to use one, I've really got the basic understanding for all of them. So I can change the title, styles, you know, everything in here that you might want to choose in order to change the style of things. Remember, if you've watched my pages videos, in here is those secret little outline tips, so you can start to play around with different outline styles on your presentations, really, really nice touch and the arrangements. This one's probably quite important actually within keynote presentation because you might have you know pictures and text sort of overlapping each other and it's quite useful to know that you have that option to have things laying over the top. I'll show that here if I come in um, again with the plus adding all your media adding shapes if I stick a shape in here now because I've just added that in it's the top layer okay but actually what I'm going to want is my text to be over the top 
So that's where a range comes in really handy. So therefore I can have my text over the top of pictures. So, you know, if you've got that idea of, of building presentations in this style, that's a really, really useful thing. And sometimes is the bit that people can come unstuck on because you need to understand about the layers. Sharing, so collaborating on documents. Again, I can change my share options. Who can see it? Um, do they need to have the link or is it only people that I invite? And do I want them to be able to just view my presentation or allow them to make changes? And then finally, the three dots. Now, again, in pages, there were some very specific things. In Keynote, again, it's really around the fact that this is a presentation tool. So we have these transitions and builds. So if I wanted to work on this presentation title coming in at a certain point, I can, you know, at the moment I've got it set for this um, keyboard. So it looks like it's typing. And then it's going to move on the screen. I think I've had it as like as a motion path as well. So there's lots of things that you can play around with. Watch some of the other videos that I've put in the playlist. We'll talk to you about how you can use different animation tools in order to build things, building models for your learners to understand science. You can use this to create um, app prototypes. There's all sorts of things that you can use with these um, animation type things. Uh, really, really useful tool. So just a little bit further down the line than just using it as a presentation tool. Okay, last thing to just quickly show you, if you want to rehearse a presentation, the Rehearse Slideshow is a really, really useful tool. When I'm in Rehearse Slideshow, I have some very specific tools. So up here, I can actually use um, like a highlighter. So I can you know point to certain areas whilst I'm presenting. And I also have a colouring pens of various colours and I can draw on the slide to again, draw attention. It might be I'm circling something, whatever it might be. So there we go. So lots and lots of things that you can do. Oh, one last thing, actually, I should have shown you this whilst we're in Rehearse Slideshow. When you're in Rehearse Slideshow, you'll notice along the top that we have this timer. Now, the timer starts when you start your presentation. If I click on the timer, it will go to the current time. If I tap it again, it will go to this timer. Now, if there was more slides in my presentation, obviously, I would have slides to work through. I haven't built anything at the moment. But that is a really, really useful tool. If you know that you've only got a certain amount of time to present for, use that timer to help you understand that. And then obviously downside here, whether I want to be able to see my notes as well as having my presentation on the screen at the same time. Okay, last thing to say, plus down the bottom here, that's where I'm gonna find my new slides, my new templates that I wanna work off of, the whole range in here that you might want to use when you add them in. You can also edit the master. So, you know, this is a lovely layout, but let's say that I actually want to use a similar sort of approach, but actually I want mine laid out a little bit different. So we can just think, well, actually I'd, I'd have all my text up here, for example. Um, and then that's gonna save that as your master slide. So you'll see every time you add in that slide, so I'll find that one again, it's gonna add it in that place. So this is quite useful if you're creating um, you know, presentations and you want to put your school logo on something. If you go into the master slide, add your uh, logo into the master slide here. It's going to be on every single slide. Um, you don't have to keep positioning each time. It's always going to be in the same place. So there we go. So that's getting started with Keynote. Like I said, please check out some of the other videos on things that you can do with Keynote. It really is quite a diverse app when you get into it. There's so much you can do with it and it's a lot of fun.